Welcome to Waiver Watch episode 4 on December 8th, 2019. We are 107waivers.com and each week we pick out some of the most interesting waivers, kind of talk about them and go into a little deep dive to give you a little bit of perspective on how you might approach getting an advanced waiver. And of course, if you need help, 107waivers.com is there for you. Um, also, each week we like to talk about an acronym that the FAA uses and also the drone industry uses. There's so many flying around that we want to make sure we're on top of all of them. So we like to do a little Sesame Street here. So today's letters are brought to you by today. Wait, excuse me. Today's episode is brought to you by the letters USS. Jakey, are we hopping on the Enterprise or what are we doing here? What what does this even mean? USS Enterprise, (laughs) Nimitz, uh, something like that. I don't actually know what that stands for in that context, though. We're going to have to hit Google up. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, in the context of the FAA, uh, yeah. USS stands for Unmanned Service Supplier. These are your air maps, your skywards, your kitty hawks. Uh, there's like actually 20 of them now. But 20 USSs. Something like that, yeah. There's a lot. Um, but yeah, it's the, it's the apps that give you Lance, and someday they'll give you UTM services. I know we just used two more acronyms there, but uh, we'll cover <laughs> we'll them going- next week. We'll be going for a while with our acronyms. We yeah. have no shortage of sponsors for <laughs> for right. our episodes. That's right. <laughs> yeah, for so sure. Yeah, unmanned for sure. service supplier. That's all it is. Very, very cool. Thank you for that. Brought to you by USS, unmanned service supplier. USS. Yeah. Jakey, yeah. so let's, get let's, some waivers, huh? let's get into it. So last week, right, we had just a phenomenal record-setting week of 52 waivers Jake, am I disappointed on the number this week? What do we got? A little bit, but it is Uh. the second highest. So, I mean, they did pretty good with the uh, turkey and the annual leave and stuffing and everything. So, uh, they had had 33 waivers this week, Uh, 30 of them for daylight operations. It's always the biggest number. Mm -hmm. That's 107.29. They had one for 107.39 Alpha, one for 107.39 Bravo. We're going to explain why that's important in a second. And the final one was a another BV loss waiver. We talked about these last week. It's a 107.31 and 107.33. Uh, one waiver awesome. for two regulations. So. Awesome. Awesome. So let's jump into that 107.39B, which is fun yeah. to read about yeah. here. So it's interesting because it's we haven't seen this one yet. Um, mm-hmm. And so the waiver holder, the responsible party, would be... Uh, Mr. Boyd here of Boyd Instrument and Supply Co. So let's really dig into the, let's, let's read that one paragraph that we went over earlier that is yeah. just super interesting yeah. on how do you get to operate over, you know, or waive the provision of 107.39B. Like this is something that the FAA doesn't really hand out like right. easily. So yeah, I think this is the first one, even past the show, just this is this is very rare. I think this is the first one we've ever seen. So yeah, we'll have to talk um, about first, seconds, and thirds later. But yeah. <laughs> let's right. go. <laughs> let's yeah. go in. So let's go into that paragraph. B. So yeah. So that's that is that's the important thing. So when we look in the waiver, page two, it actually describes uh, what you're waived, and mm-hmm. it's not just that you get like a regulation waived, and that kind of gives you blanket approval to go do everything that the waiver or sorry, that the regulation would normally prohibit. So the the paragraph here actually says, you know, 10739 Bravo is waived to the extent necessary to allow operations over moving vehicles in a controlled access site. So normally this waiver, or sorry, I keep saying waiver. This regulation <laughs> prohibits, or, or it says you have to operate over vehicles that are stationary or people that are located under structures, right? Covered structures. Yeah. Which... And like when we we kind of like deep dived in our, our previous conversation here, just on the side about the one hundred seven three nine regulation in general. So there's like almost like three pieces of that regulation. So you have so the starting sentence, right? No person may operate a small small unmanned aircraft over a human being unless. So then the, we have a right directly participating in the operation, right? Or b located under a covered structure. And then let's pause here because it says or inside a stationary vehicle so there's like three right 
yeah. operating over people that are participating in your operation. So the PIC, the VO, then we have under a covered structure. So like a gazebo or a office building. And then there's the stationary moving vehicle, right? So now we're talking about a vehicle. It's okay if that vehicle is parked. However, if that vehicle starts moving, no longer is it underneath the provision or uh, 107.39B. Yeah. So yeah, and it, this is actually, it, the concern actually doesn't necessarily come from the FAA. We've heard in the past, this is actually like FAA's boss's policy, the DOT. Ooh. So the concern, they- <laughs> I mean, you guys are wondering like probably well, what what's the big deal flying over a moving car? But the concern is that if this thing comes down in a road, you know, hits the windshield, uh, maybe it could penetrate the windshield that to us, that seems a little unlikely, but it maybe it could happen. Big U S mm-hmm. something, mm-hmm. or maybe the more realistic scenario is it crashes in the road. It startles drivers. It causes this chain reaction and you know, right. people are in the ditch or in whatever into each other. So right. that's kind of the concern. So, so like why, why would the FAA even consider waiving this then? Like what? So like, this is like where we start thinking about, okay, what type of vehicles are they operating over? What potentially could be happening? And in the waiver, it kind of describes and shows some restrictions on maybe how this is accomplished. So let's just think about like a large construction site with heavy equipment, you know, machinery such as like bulldozers and cranes. And I'm trying to find the words here. They're pretty strong. Right? Yeah. I mean, they're, they're engineered in yeah. such a way that like they have rollover protection. So like this yeah. bulldozer can flip and the person inside the cab will not die because it has a strong enough structure to protect it. So the guy might not even know, guy or gal operating, might not even know that this drone hit the equipment because well, it's... Let's hit on that for a second, though. If, uh, as the applicant, I would probably say, though, that uh, all my employees are going to be aware of these activities. For sure. You know, they're going to know sure. if it hits them. Like you said, it's not going to do any harm, but the driver probably mm-hmm. is not going to be startled by it, right? And that's and that would be so like a number of factors, right? So yeah. the bulldozer's moving slow, right? It's not right. it's not going seventy miles an hour to drop a load somewhere. Yeah, it's it's That'd be a heck of a bulldozer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about some efficiencies there, right? <laughs> so, right, there's just so many things that you can describe to work towards getting mm-hmm. this operating over vehicle because. Let's face it, right? We can, in certain conditions, you can safely operate over a vehicle. It might be restrictions on speed, restrictions on the size of aircraft, uh, you know, durations. Like, okay, you can transit over them, but you can't hover over a moving vehicle. You know, like, don't be filming them and hovering over them. But if you're moving to do, like, some photogrammetry and scanning the site, you're only transiting over that vehicle for, you know, a fraction of a second. And then your hazard is, your risk is changing. Yeah, and it's uh, you know it's important to remember too what this waiver does not uh, waive is the requirement not to operate over human beings. So, right uh, in this controlled site, wherever it is, uh, well, it does mention in the waiver, but it's kind of vague. It just talks about four names in Pennsylvania somewhere, but uh, you know there's not construction workers walking around in intermingled with these vehicles. This mm-hmm. is probably just like you said something where they're dozing or leveling or hauling out rock whatever it is right so. right yep. a very very good point to really hit home on that like this is not to operate over people only moving vehicles yep with some restrictions that we can't quite get all the restrictions out of the the waiver provision but if we get creative we probably can get pretty close to some of them right i think so yeah, yeah. so yeah i mean so that's pretty i mean we really went into that if you guys have more questions you know Shoot us a comment in the YouTube video. We're going to have this on podcast as well. Also hit us up on our website. We certainly have uh, some web addresses there that you can shoot us messages. We'd love to hear from you uh, yep. for that little plug. But let's jump into like, let's Second jump into the other one. one. Yeah. Who, somebody talking about driving, who's been at sleep at the wheel for a while here. I think it's <laughs> Precision Hawk. And Precision we've got, Hawk. Yeah. We've got some good news to share about them. Uh, they've kind of did a little bit of refresher on some of their previous waivers so yeah yeah let's let's talk about this one real quick we won't go too crazy in depth but let's let's just talk yeah about maybe it. uh maybe the quick history so precision hawk was a pathfinder project back in like 2016 2017 that was that was like one of the first fa programs that they partnered with companies to do research and 
enable UAS and so on. So Precision Hawk was big into uh, extended range operations mm -hmm. or BB loss. Mm -hmm. So I think the culmination of their Pathfinder project, which ended in like 2018, was a daisy chain waiver. We've talked about one of these last week. Uh, it allows you to fly beyond the site of the pilot, but not necessarily all the crew members. So there's mm -hmm. still a VO that has it in sight. But but this week's waiver, we were kind of surprised to see them back on the board. Um, <laughs> they basically refreshed it. You know, they, they kind of just got a renewal with some modern verbiage, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we have a graphic on our website again on, on kind of what this looks like. Uh, and we did talk about it last week, so go you know, listen or watch that episode. But what's unique about this week, Brent? Or, this or one, yeah, yeah, this is like the holy grail of daisy chain visual observers because it's for all of Class G in the U.S. So yeah. most of the time when you're requesting this daisy chain visual observer, you're asking for like a specific area, you know, like, hey, FAA, I want to fly here and go from here to here. It's three miles and this is how many VOs I'm going to use. Well, Precision Hawk has somehow built their waiver request to say, hey, we want to fly everywhere. And this is our process on how we accomplish daisy chain visual observers. So here are our parameters. We follow these. And if we don't follow these, we're not in compliance with our waiver. So we're not asking for anything outside of this. And right. the FAA was cool enough to say, hey, we like what you put down. Um, and we'll grant you all of class G in the U S which is super sweet. So this is like the scalability, yep. right? And yep. like we said last week, it's a little bit cheaper right now to put a VO out there other than, you know, setting up some awesome radar system so that you can do mm -hmm. your detect and avoid with radar. You know, now we're just using VOs, which we do for regular 107 operations and it's effective, but yeah. scalable, uh, you know, once that technology gets down and, uh, competitive with a VO you know, groups of VOs, because now we're going to be talking about if we want to fly five miles or whatever, right? We're going to have to have several VOs out there. Yeah, this one doesn't, this one doesn't actually specify. I remember last week's waiver, it actually <laughs> limited it, your number of visual observers to one. So mm -hmm. you, you can only do like one hop out. This one actually doesn't. So it kind of makes so, me wonder if they can so, do like a, you know, two or three VOs down the yeah. line versus just one. Well, I mean, if Precision Hawk is listening, hey, you know, if you need VOs to stretch across the U.S., let's, uh, <laughs> you know, reel us in here. We'll try to figure out how many we can get. And let's let's do a first uh, daisy chain visual observer of unmanned systems across the U.S. Across I think that US. would be, I mean, if we're going to talk about first, right, like that would be a first and probably very expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Precision Hawk's got lots of venture capital, right? And yeah, you know, I, I mean, think so. it's important to to realize that this is this is a really unique waiver. It's probably something that most companies cannot achieve. Mm -hmm. uh, Precision Hawk's been at this for many, many, many years. Lots of lobbying and, and FAA contacts. So, right, uh, we we can get small versions of this waiver uh, approved today, but. This is pretty unique uh, right. for a company like Precision Ox, So Right. Yeah. So I think, you know, we'll keep it nice and short and sweet here. Um, let's uh, kind of wrap it up here. But again, you know, like FAA, hopefully we can be doing a episode about 107 waivers and their waiver coming. So if you're listening, <laughs> we've got 05614 in the queue. Just bump it up to the top. Maybe get a little IPP. <laughs> special treatments there uh we'd love hey, to share that with everyone quit using acronyms we haven't covered uh, yeah okay well you know that's why you got to keep listening because each week we'll cover each <laughs> acronym yeah. that we that we use <laughs> yep. yeah leave us a comment uh you know if you find these interesting or have mm -hmm. questions uh we're gonna yep. just keep plugging away at these we have like like brent said apple podcast spotify we're on youtube and, and our website so mm -hmm. consume We've, this the way you like and and uh, let us know what you think. We've got it all. So thanks again for listening, watching, and uh, fly safe. See you next time.